Adams Gallery. My name is Julie and I'll be giving you a short virtual tour of the works available. One of the first artists you'll come across as you walk in the door are the works of Angus Rutherford. From him we have two works which are ink on paper, down at the far end as well, and one limited edition etching. Angus describes his work a good day for me will begin with a walk to some spot a little away from the footpath where I can sit all day, often upon a hilltop, and with my mark-making sticks or bendy steel nibs, I can open an inquiry into the complex wonders of the scene before me. In complete contrast, we have a limited edition screen print by Adam Green, who is co-owner of Adam's Gallery. This one was made at the Advanced Graphic London Studios and it's an edition of 25. It's called In the Beginning, which is very apt for this particular show. And the elements are hand-painted onto acetates, which are then transferred onto silk screens, which are in turn are then used to print ink onto paper. The build-up of layers is an ongoing theme for him and seeing how far he can push the space within the picture plane is something he's really interested in. Artist Kamal Mahmood applies a totally different way of mark making. On this surface, there are actually no marks at all. Everything is achieved by stretching and priming the canvas on both sides and then drawing a grid on the reverse side. He will randomly cut and manipulate the surface, setting up a subtle interplay of light and shadow. A synthetic fabric is then stretched across the surface of the canvas, which at first inspection masks the flat fact that the canvas has been cut. Some of the pieces rely on natural light, while others are illuminated from behind. Kamal says, I like the idea that what it is, is elusive, and that it will be more apparent at certain times of day than at others. I want to affect the way the viewer feels in a similar way that at any particular moment a space can stop you in your tracks and you end up pausing to take it in. From ceramicist Faye Mayo, we have these exquisite little bowls and these characterful busts with the gold and the detailing. Faye's pieces present a sense of delicacy. Marks of the making process remain visible on the exterior where fine imprints of nature contrast with harsh marks all referring to life's experiences. The use of feathers and leaves also expresses vulnerability. These impressions build together to make a whole piece or person. Upstairs we will show you one of her torsos. Faye thins the clay to give a further sense of fragility. However, Faye's intention is to draw the gaze of the viewer to the interior, where the blue hues hint at the possibility of inner renewal. Each piece has the nature of a vessel whispering of the potential for a connection to the transcendent. Returning to screen printing, artist Heidi Harrington specialises in print and ceramics. Heidi will take her own photography and then print images onto clay forming them into decorative interior pieces, including moon jars, which these are, the circular ones, vases, plates and wall pieces. The images are allowed to gently stretch and move during the making process, leaving each handmade piece completely unique. She's inspired by both the movement and the stillness in nature, and hopes to capture these fleeting moments in the surface and forms of her porcelain. Also downstairs, you'll find the work of photorealist painter Christian Hayes, who works quickly with wet-on-wet -wet oil paint. He's developed this style over many years, and the subject for this painting is the fall of man. It is called Icarus, and it depicts an astronaut's helmet that was found on the ground after the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster in 1986. As you come upstairs, you'll come across two works by Alison Bezersdotter. 
These are both collages, which is a recent exploration for her, as she's typically a painter. She finds modularity and compelling, and she's currently exploring it through collage. She collects discarded printed materials and alters the papers as the first step in the process. Once the papers are prepared and sorted, it becomes a simple act of cutting them into modular shapes, arranging and gluing them into place. The climate crisis is foremost in her work at the moment. These pieces, titled Vessel 1 and 2, specifically reference the earth and its geological formations, striations and segmentation of minerals that make up the mantle of the earth. Artist Giselle Jones uses photo transfer and painting techniques to focus and comment on political current affairs. She has studied Marc Auge and his theory on the non-place versus the anthropological place, and she develops the idea that occasionally the two merge to create a third space. She illustrates this by merging digital immaterial imagery with traditional techniques such as paint material. In the same vein, artist David Johnston uses in this oil painting two stills from a TV series in the 70s called Threads, which is all about a post-nuclear world. Nearby you'll find two collages by artist Mark Goodwin. Departing from an integral and fundamental use of paint, these two works operate on an immediate accessibility. Using found materials and collage, there is an immersion in the language of abstraction which highlights a playful and intuitive exploration of the chosen surface. He would like the torn paper, magazines and scarred supports in these works to represent a layered history of time, both regarding the material and its execution. We also have a couple of works by artist Carolyn Daunt. She drops inks onto paper and lets them flow and blend into each other in a random formation. She then starts to bend and tilt the paper to form shapes and to help the ink flow into each side across the horizon, forming a tree line. She will paint extra branches with a fine brush, working quickly with the wet ink. She says it can sometimes feel like a form of meditation, watching the shapes form and the colours bleed into one another. She enjoys working with materials that produce random effects and likes to be surprised by the results. Denise Blackburn's work is inspired by nature. This particular painting, Thingvellir, describes the feeling of being in Thingvellir National Park in Iceland. She uses a very pale and smooth surface and evokes an ethereal mood and colour. She has painted the National Park many times and she always finds it induces this light and peaceful feeling. Therefore, she felt she needed to convey a lightness of touch and use gentle colours. In contrast, her other work, River of Peace, is all about the incredible walks she took during lockdown and beyond. This painting uses a more rhythmic process and flow with slightly thicker paint and the use of different textures and colours. In River of Peace, she's conveying the whole experience of these walks, the light, the colour, the layers of nature, and it all coming together like a piece of music. Artist Kiri Keepin has a love for the natural world, for landscape and the figure, which have all informed her art. She will paint and draw portraits, flocking birds, elderly residents of old people's homes, lizards, children, trees and woodlands. As a resident of the Surrey Hills, she's inspired by its beauty. Recently, her paintings have been documenting the changing seasons in a local wood in which she walks every day, enjoying the time spent there exploring, both with her three children and working as a forest school assistant, facilitating the engagement of children interacting with nature.
This painting is one from a year-long series in which the artist, Steve Dundas, has used solvent to rework the ink of an advertisement to subvert its purpose with a hint of humour and of despair. It is one of a pair and the other is currently hanging in the Royal Academy Winter Exhibition. The pieces explore the age of plastic, the plasticine, which we are daily creating for ourselves through re-sculpted flesh and new romance. Steve tries to avoid being too literal. He enjoys ambiguity and suggestion and the half revealed. The brain creates richer patterns for itself with maybe each time something new being seen. Margot Lemons's work consists of hand-sewn and embroidered images. Her work reads as a roller coaster of colour and meaning. She likes to experiment with different mediums and to challenge how you are supposed to work with them. She uses textiles, knitting, embroidery and more unorthodox tools alongside traditional mediums such as paint, drawing and print. She often uses contrasting textures and, to make the work tactile, combine and juxtapose soft and hard fibres with bold colours. She wants the viewer to be drawn to touch the piece and to feel the textures. She likes to challenge herself and is always trying to put a twist on projects, aiming to think outside of the box. She enjoys challenging the viewer and enjoys dividing opinion. For artist Liz Keeley, painting is very simple. If she sees something she likes, then she will try to think of how it will work as a painting. Usually it is the colour or composition rather than the subject matter that appeals to her, but it will always be organic or natural. These days, Liz paints only in oil using traditional turpentine for mixing the paint and the glazes. The things that inspire her most are in particular autumn and its rich colours, and she loves painting out of the dark background with a strong light source in the chiaroscuro style. In a totally different vein is Harry Morland's artwork, which uses an energetic combination of spray paint and acrylic. He works very fast and with multitudes of colour. This is an example of Kamal Mahmood's backlit work. So here again we see all the cuts that they are filtering, the light filters through rather than changing with the time of day. Although you can exhibit this during the day without a backlit. Artist Jason Keeley has designed and directed moving image sequences for many brands, both nationally and internationally, some of which have won prestigious industry awards, including the D and AD Silver Pencil. As an ongoing personal project over the last five years, he has created a series of abstract and figurative print works. These have been inspired by dance, the human form, and by the pop artists of the 60s. This particular artwork here is a direct digital UV print to brushed aluminium. Artist Anthony Steer works in acrylics and the subject matter are taken from his walks and explorations around Leatherhead where he lives. These four autumnal monoprints by Angela Collins are particularly intriguing as each one includes a piece of embroidery straight into the fabric of the print. Similarly, artist Louise Wishart's work is gouache and watercolour and mixed media. She loves architecture, the textures, shapes and layers, and how the surfaces interact, and how the subject can be interpreted in infinite ways. 
She uses both found ephemera and handmade printed papers to create the atmosphere of the piece. If she can find topical images to incorporate within the work, such as stamps from the country or packaging, then she can also print her own paper or use papers she has sourced. The work is mixed media, mainly centred around collage and watercolour, but also with pencil work and gouache. Also upstairs you'll find another piece by Faye Mayo, a piece of ceramic stoneware. This piece is built painstakingly leaf by leaf from the base up. No frame is used and Faye will find its organic form as she builds. This is just one of a number of Sheila Wells' works. Sheila makes exuberant floral works painted in acrylic. The work is semi-abstract, with more of a suggestion of a scene rather than being botanically accurate, although the plants are always of a realistic size. Sheila starts with a large brush and uses expressive marks. Flower shapes begin to emerge, which she then develops using finer brushwork. So the final piece to show in our virtual opening, in our virtual gallery, is by Adam Green. There he is. And this one's called A Thousand and One Tables. These tables are, well, these patterns as well, are constructed over painstaking hours of detailed work. Um, Adam has painted many tables in his career, although it's only just one strand of his diverse practice, really. Um, you'll remember that you saw a screen print downstairs. So Adam actually does have a, a collection of tables in real life, so tables definitely feature. Um, there are plenty in the studio space, all serving different needs, apparently, and helping him organise his mind, as he tells me. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this virtual tour and this is now to let you know that you can purchase any of the works you've seen. If you go on to the website www.adamsgallery.co.uk, you'll be able to find a PDF on there with all the works listed and their prices. And if you have an interest in a work, then please do just contact us through the site or you can email us on info at adamsgallery.co.uk and there should also be a telephone number on the site as well. So thanks very much for coming and I hope you enjoy seeing the work and hopefully see you for real in December.